Did the Colorado Buffs get some good news heading into this matchup against Kansas State? Sounds like 21 is going to be back on the field as Coach Prime talked about it in his media day on Tuesday. Some things that may have been missed. We're going to dive into that as well as Joe Klatt dropped his top five for the Heisman. You know some of them names are going to be on there for the Buffs and we'll also wrap up with what the Buffs need to do to win this game against Kansas State. And one of those hinges on this most recent news that Prime gave us about the defense. So we'll dive into that here on the Prime Time for College Football. Thank y'all for pulling up. Let's jump right into the meat and potatoes of this video. This video is powered by our partners over at BetUS. Check them out. They're hooking up the gamer. 150% bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000 by using promo code YouTube150. So Coach Prime, during his you know media availability, we talked about it a little bit. He talked about playing against Kansas State and what all of that means. But one thing that did come down the line from that is Coach Prime mentioned that 21 is going to be on the field. Starting safety Shiloh Sanders, who had surgery after a forearm injury against Nebraska, took him out. He's making his valiant return. He's going to be playing in this game. He's expected to start. So that actually puts the entire starting defense back into commission for the buff. So this week off helps and allows for everybody to get healthy. Shiloh being able to play. Now, Prime did mention that Carter Stoudemire, the, the safety that's been basically replacing Shiloh at the moment, will have some packages with him on the field as he's done a really good job of getting the experience needed to, you know, grow within this role. So he expects him to be the future going forward. But Shiloh coming in, like I said, gives you that experience you're going to need going up against Kansas State because it's really this reason. And we're going to talk about the keys to beating Kansas State and we'll wrap up with Joel Klatt. So stick around. I'll tell you what Klatt had to say. But Kansas State is a very much heavy run team. And so I went and looked at the numbers. Kansas State, yards per game in the conference right now, they're sixth, only playing five games, but they're 432 per game. And run-wise, they run 252 yards per game at this pace right now, which is second in conference right behind UCF, in which you saw what the Buffs did against UCF. The game plan is going to be similar because Kansas State does not really throw the ball well. They are second to last at 180 yards per game in the Big 12 in passing. Literally, number 15, right above Houston. We know Houston is abysmal when it comes to the pass right now. So for the Buffs, it's going to be about stopping the run. And this is why Shiloh coming back is going to be big. I know I've seen some people jump in the message boards and say they prefer to see Carter because of how well he's played, and I totally get that. Shiloh led the team in tackles last year at 70. He was like 25th in the Pac-12 at the time in tackles on the season. And so he's bringing back you're bringing back your top tackler and someone that's going to be able to help with watching out for what we're going to get out of Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson's going to go out there. He's going to get his scrambles in and his runs. But the big thing is Kansas State runs the ball a lot. And so you're going to need as many veteran guys that are willing to go down, heal, and hit and fill up gaps on a regular basis. And I know that Carter can do it. You know, we've seen him do it this season so far. But the key thing is Shiloh's going to give you more of what you're looking for, honestly, in comparison to the young guy. I don't expect Kansas State to really throw the ball a lot in this game. Now, Avery Johnson can sling it but they haven't slinged it very well this season so far. And he's been playing the entire time. They're going to want to run the ball with, with, with DJ Giddens as well as Dylan Edwards. The expectation is they're going to put the ball in their hands. And so for the Buffs, this is some really good news because shoring up your defense against this team, especially because Kansas State's ranked right now, it's going to put you in a really good position to actually win this game. So tell me what y'all think. Hop in the comments. How y'all feeling about Shiloh? coming back i would love to hear from you all and so with, besides that we talked about joel clatt you know former colorado quarterback nfl guy fox sports analyst and he put out his top five on the heisman list on his show this week and you're gonna hear about this every week mainly because we all know 
who's up there at the top of the list or at least in the top in contention right now is our guy Travis Hunter. And I was actually having a conversation with some guys not too long ago, and one of the big conversation was that what is the Heisman? Is it really about the most dynamic player in the country? Is it the best player in the country? Like, what is it? And the, the actual award is the most outstanding player, but the question is, can a player like Travis Hunter, with his with his resume, win this award? That's where the questions come in. I'm not sure if the Heisman Trust and the Heisman voters will take that in consideration because there's a lot of Heisman voters out there. Just keep that in mind. But but what he is doing is so dynamic that you have to take that in consideration. And that's always been my argument. If you put up something that no one has ever seen before or get close to that, you're going to win the award. His biggest challenger right now is Ashton Genty, the running back at a Boise State. Granted, he is in was at the group of six, I guess you could say, or group of five and a half <laughs> with the new Pac-12 the way it is. But for Gentry to win this award, right now he's got over a 1,000 yards rushing in roughly five games. If he keeps this pace, he'll get 2,200, 2,300 yards rushing, which will be much higher than what we've seen from anybody else. And the fact that he gets these yards after the tackle, I mean, I think he leads the country in, in, in yards after contact, the first contact, Dude's a monster. For him to win this award, truly, especially being someone in the G5, he's going to have to produce Barry Sanders-type numbers, as in 26-29 is the number that he's most likely going to have to get, or at least get close to 26-28, which was Barry Sanders' record for rushing yards in a season. He's going to have to get close to that. The good thing for Travis is he's putting up those elite wide receiver numbers, which will get him in the 100 catches for over 1,000 yards, but he's also trending to get five interceptions on the season. And if he finishes with over five interceptions on the defensive side, right, five interceptions to go along with 100 catches and 1,000 yards and double-digit touchdowns, which he'll finish with double-digit touchdowns. That'll be an easy one, knock on wood, as long as he stays healthy. I think Travis Hunter has the best chance of winning it, and Joe Klatt believes that as well. He believes that he's up there at the top because – He's definitely going to be a first-round draft pick in the NFL. Having over five, having 561 yards, six touchdowns, and two picks so far, and then, of course, that forced fumble to seal it, he's done everything that he needs to do while also playing every single snap. Just about. Who else is doing that? That's the perfect story. So we're going to keep pushing this narrative. Travis Hunter for Heisman. We're going to do this every week. Make sure y'all tune in and make sure y'all share this wide and far because we need to get everybody sold on the fact that Travis Hunter needs to win the Heisman. Let me know what y'all think. What do you think about his thoughts, his chances of actually winning the Heisman? Love to hear from each of you. All right. We'll dive into, we'll break down the game afterwards. We'll be around. I'm going to be watching the heck out of that game. And we'll probably either go live after the game or we'll we'll post something. You know, we'll definitely post something the morning after. We'll break down how the game goes. But I think the Bucs have a good chance of winning this. If any news hits... You'll see it here on the channel. And yeah, we'll talk soon.